Hello, everybody. I'm David Schuster. I want to start today's video with a recent Fox News segment featuring Republicans Trey Gowdy and Kevin McCarthy. They were discussing the upcoming election, and during their conversation, something pretty interesting slipped out. Watch, and then we'll break things down. There's a correlation between raising money and winning races. While Republicans hold a slim majority in the House, they're being badly outspent for this fall. Control of the chamber literally comes down to a small group of districts, many of them in blue states. I think it's easier for Republicans to pick up seats this cycle than it has been for the last two. Unfortunately, what has changed is Democrats have tremendous amounts more money than the Republicans do. And we're in the All majority. Right. We are in the majority, said former Republican House Speaker Kevin McCarthy, but Democrats have far more money. And in that statement is the indirect admission I mentioned earlier. The reason Democrats often have more campaign cash is largely due to the vast amount of small dollar grassroots donations they receive. Democrats generally get much more of these smaller dollar donations than Republicans who tend to rely on large contributions from billionaires or corporate interests. But let's pause and think about what that means. On a broader scale, this suggests that Democrats appeal more to the average American voter, while the Republican Party leans heavily on wealthy elites and special interests. And this goes beyond just campaign finance efforts. It's a window into the deeper ideological divide between the two parties. The Republican Party, for all of its rhetoric about populism and standing up for the forgotten man, often pushes policies that contradict the interests of everyday Americans. Take tax cuts for the wealthy, for example. Trickle-down economics have been proven time and again to primarily benefit fit the richest individuals and corporations, not the middle or working class. Yet trickle-down economics remains a cornerstone of GOP policy, reinforcing a system where the rich get richer, while many Americans struggle to make ends meet. This disconnect between Republican leadership and the average citizen is a fundamental flaw in the party's ideology. Yes, the Democrats have their own issues. Corruption exists in both parties, and corporate influence is not exclusive to Republicans. But the Republican Party's agenda often directly undermines the American dream. Republicans tout freedom and opportunity, but their policies on health care, labor rights, and economic inequality tend to limit opportunities for a huge portion of the population. Look at health care, for instance. Republicans have consistently fought against expanding access to affordable health care, whether through attempts to repeal the Affordable Care Act or blocking initiatives that would bring down drug prices. The irony is that this affects millions of working class and rural voters who make up a significant part of their base. By opposing policies that would improve the quality of life for everyday Americans, the Republican Party aligns itself with health care corporate profit interests rather than the people Republicans Republicans claim to represent. Democrats are not off the hook, of course. The Democratic Party also has some significant problems from establishment figures cozying up to Wall Street to internal divisions that often prevent passing meaningful legislation. But the blatant way in which Republicans prioritize the interests of the wealthy and powerful over the common good is undeniable. It's repressive to the American ideal of fairness, equality, and opportunity. In the end, the GOP's reliance on big donors and their alignment with corporate power reflects a party that is increasingly out of touch with the needs and desires of average Americans. The American dream, the idea that through hard work anyone can succeed, is slowly but steadily being eroded by GOP policies that concentrate wealth and power at the top, making it harder for people to rise from the bottom. And that's something we need to be talking about, not just in the context of elections, but when we think about the future of our democracy. And all of this the reliance on big donors, the disconnect between GOP leadership and the average American is playing out right before eyes in the 2024 presidential race. What's remarkable is that despite everything I just mentioned, this race is actually still close, with Kamala Harris holding only a slight edge over Donald Trump. And Democrats in Congress overall are also only slightly ahead of Republicans. Now, Let's rewind a bit. The Democrats did not exactly have a smooth summer this election cycle. You probably remember that disastrous debate back in June when President Joe Biden went head-to-head -head with Donald Trump. It was painful to watch. Biden's age showed. And that performance, along with the widespread panic in the Democratic Party, pressured Biden to step out of the race. Until Biden announced his withdrawal, it felt like the Democratic Party was going to implode, with many voters questioning whether Democrats even had a viable candidate. But then Joe Biden withdrew from the campaign. The party quickly unified behind Kamala Harris as the nominee, and her campaign got off to a remarkably smooth and compelling start. And now, despite a truncated calendar and intense rollout of her biography and policies, Harris 
is slightly favored to win this election. This alone speaks volumes about the broader political landscape. You have the Democratic Party, largely in chaos at the start of the summer, now in the lead. It shows just how flawed the Republican Party's messaging and policies really are. Think about it, Kamala Harris isn't just fighting the usual political battle. She's facing an electorate that was already disillusioned by the messiness within the Democratic Party. Yet Harris has managed to gain ground. And while she certainly has her critics, Harris has been able to appeal to a broad coalition of voters, much like Joe Biden did in 2020. This speaks to a larger point. Despite their internal struggles, Democrats, whether it's through policy or just a clearer vision for the future, continue to resonate with more Americans. Harris's lead, however slim, however slim it is, is a reflection of the fact that when voters are given the choice between the Republican Party's repressive agenda, rooted in protecting the interests of the wealthy elite, and a Democratic Party that, despite its own issues, continues to be able to gain ground, Americans are generally choosing Democrats and their progressive policies, looking at the future, looking at an economy that invites everybody to participate and looks out for everybody, not just the wealthiest, the corporations, the richest 1%. And this is resonating in a lot of state races as well. Democrats are making big investments in their efforts to hold on to the Senate. They are also making efforts to flip a seat, like in Florida, where Democrat Debbie Marcasso Powell is looking to unseat Republican Senator Rick Scott. Late last month, the DNC announced a six-figure investment for get-out-the-vote efforts in the state, and Senate Democrats' campaign arm announced a multi-million dollar ad buy in both Florida and Texas. Just the other day, Marcasso Powell picked up a key endorsement. Take a look. Florida, you hear it every two years. This election is too important to sit out. Well, it's true this year, too. That's why we have to elect Debbie Mukersell Powell to the U.S. Senate. Here's the deal. Debbie grew up under a dictatorship and came to America to find freedom and a chance to do better. Ironically, Debbie McCarcel Powell and her fellow Democrats are now fighting off a potential American dictatorship being pushed by the Republican Party. What's also interesting here is that this election in Florida and countless other states could have easily been a golden opportunity for Republicans. With Joe Biden's struggles and the Democrats initially looking disorganized, analysts say the race for the White House and control of Congress should have been easier for the GOP. But instead, the Republicans up and down the ballot are trailing, and the election is slipping away from them. And that's because at the end of the day, the Republican Party has refused to evolve. Their core ideology, especially under Donald Trump's influence, remains out of step with what many Americans want. Republicans continue to cling to policies that benefit a small, wealthy minority, while Harris and the Democrats are managing to rally a support from a broader base, whether that's younger people, working class voters, or communities of color. So even with the bumpy start, the Democrats have managed to rally behind Harris, and it's because she and her party are offering something that resonates more deeply with a greater number of Americans. And that something includes opportunity, fairness, respect for individual rights, and an embrace of basic facts. And taken together, despite all of the noise, Democrats are in the lead and are favored to win the White House and get a majority in the U.S. Congress. However, the only survey that really matters is the one that counts, the actual voting. So remember, if you care about the direction of this country and are determined to have a society that reflects your values and character and priorities and policies, be sure to vote. Confirm that you are registered in advance and cast that ballot, either through mail-in voting, walk-in voting, or absentee. Take nothing for granted in this election. Make sure your vote is counted. It will make you feel good, and it will help all of us. I'm David Schuster. Thanks for watching.